Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of The Very Online Show. As with every week, we have spent the last week being very online, and we're here to drop some knowledge. Once again, it is me and Lucy, very online, and Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing this week? Uh, I'm doing great, and I'm just about, you know, like medium online. So mm, medium I'm ready online. to learn, yeah. The interesting thing is now we've actually... We're deliberately making you be less online. Yeah, I'm like trying to avoid things at all costs. I'm really just mm -hmm. looking the other way. Uh, I've learned to sort of react to certain things and just be like, oh, I can't dig any deeper. I have to mm -hmm. stay only medium online. I pretend <laughs> I do not see it. Yeah, I put yes. blinders on. It's it's pretty. It's actually pretty great. You guys should try it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have, I have like, I don't want to go off topic too much, but like this week I have set so many more things to stop me from being as online. Like I've removed all notifications for um, like Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, like the whole job lot. And it feels freeing. Also, there's a natural panic that I'm missing out on stuff, but okay. ultimately freeing. It's a PSA it's just, for, for yeah. maybe being less online. That's what the yeah. show actually is when it comes down to it. I, however, have not. I've been very, very online still, and the reason mm. uh, I've picked this subject matter for this week is because I was very online, and I got annoyed by something that you only really get if you're extremely online. Mm. Okay, Jeff, tell. Can you tell us what we've been, uh, what we're going to be discussing based on what we've told you so far? So uh, it sounds like we're going to unpack. The, the weird world of shitty mobile game ads? Yes, I, exactly. What kind, okay. what, what kind of mobile games do you play? Uh, nothing. I play... Nothing uh, at all? I play like the, the Times crossword. I do that. And then Yay. I do like the, the, uh, the little like spelling bee thing. My wife and I kind of share that. Oh, uh, word, uh, like a word jumbly type thing. Yeah, it's like that honeycomb thing where like you yeah. have to use uh, the okay. center letter mm -hmm. in all the things. And that is that is the extent of my mobile game stuff. I just don't have time. I'm not commuting anymore. When am I mm -hmm. going to do that, right? Mm. Did you ever dabble okay. in um, your candy crushes? Your Honestly, the, the only one I really got into was uh, I did get into Angry Birds like a decade ago, <laughs> you know, like that was fine. Uh, we all did. I it's played okay. The Room on mobile. Yeah. Like those games are mm -hmm. fun. Um, and then I was, uh, you know, I still love Sudoku. So I, I do that a bunch like on the beach if, you know, when I'm on the old on the beach. beach. <laughs> what, like, on the beach. The beach that makes you old. Like, Sudoku, I want to do Sudoku. Sudoku. I, the I only go, be made old on the beach that makes you old even quicker is to be on the beach that makes you old and pull out Sudoku. It's so shitty because I open my Sudoku book and all the puzzles are solved. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, God damn it. This is, the, this is the beach that finishes your Sudoku puzzles. Okay. Uh, Jeff, with that in mind, have you ever encountered the game Merge Mansion? It is not ringing a bell at all. I don't, I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, so we're going to watch uh, a, the advert for Merge Mansion, an advert okay. for Merge Mansion, um, and uh, just tell us what you're thinking while it's happening, and uh, we'll go from there. Hmm. <laughs> she know her house burned down already? Well, it looks, you know, she's in a wedding dress. Oh, is this like the flashback? Okay. What? what? She's, she's looking like she's plotting. Okay. She's gonna fix it up. Whoa, Grandma arrested <laughs> inexplicably. Don't worry, Grandma. I'll get you out of jail for whatever fucking crime you committed. Oh, she's a goblin now. Uh, nope. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> what is all of that? <laughs> so, that, that is amazing. What a amazing. twist. Oh, this is like uh, an M. Night so, Shyamalan movie. What kind of game uh, do you reckon that is? I don't even know. I thought it was just like a dumbass little matching game, but apparently it's about 
your grandma possibly being some sort of like murderer <laughs> has going to jail with many dark secrets. I have, n I don't know. I, I don't know, but it's amazing and I love it. Yeah. So, uh, the trailer, this trailer went viral, as you can see, um, of course. fairly recent, like 11th of August, but I, I, it kind of like coincidentally went viral. I was already researching fake mobile game ads, bad mo yeah. mobile game ads, because I, was playing, I was on Twitter or Instagram or something like that, and I got a lot of really awful ads. Like, I hate this shit. I'm going to figure out what the deal is with these. And then as I was doing that, Lucy sent me a message to be like, check this out. And I was like, <laughs> what? And she's like, it's perfect for what we're doing. And oh it just God. so turns out that it is, um, it's worked out really well for us. So Serendipitous. we're going to, yeah, serendipitous. We're going to get to the bottom of this stuff real quick. Okay. So I, I definitely feel like I've I've seen a lot of these sorts of ads. There's they are they are like you know internet. It, it, they're like the yeah. tabula. Let's like tabula went and showed mm. up in your timeline, and you, and you just like naturally kind kind of like glaze over that stuff. Yeah. Um. So first things first, we're gonna in a segment I call game not recognized game. Um. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get to the bottom of this stuff. So first things oh. first, what the hell are these games? So generally, yeah. they come in a bunch of flavors. Mm -hmm. Um. But for this, we're gonna stick to the ones that I most frequently have encountered. And the first game is one that looks like one thing, but is actually another. So mm -hmm. in other words, that's a misleading game advert. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They usually they usually will show like CG um, that is from that has gameplay taken from an entirely different game, um, oh. and it actually is designed to obfuscate what that actual game is. So mm -hmm. we're gonna look at what? an example of that with the next link. So this is Dragon Awaken. Wow. Well. Looks cool, right? Uh, is that the Dragon's Dogma slash Monster Hunter logo <laughs> with, I mean, All right. I guess. Ends, so abruptly, Dragon ends abruptly. Ends abruptly. Now we're going to take a look at another video, which is the official uh, launch trailer, which features gameplay from Dragon Awaken. So this is the game. Okay. For that advert. Okay. Very different to what was shown in that trailer, right? I think you'll agree. Like you wouldn't get like a good uh, indication that that yeah, previous I mean, trailer yeah. that you watch would result in this. Okay, we can stop well, watching especially that. Especially now. So okay. that is. Wait, wait, wait! Hold on. I'm sorry. Was it a Pandaren I just caught at the end there? <laughs> so like they're like nicking stuff from. Panda. Yeah, it is. It's it's yeah. a Pandaren, and so like they're nicking from. Wow, they're nicking from lol. The nicking from yeah. Monster Hunter. Exactly. Noi. So, like we said, they use gameplay from or, or CG from something else mm -hmm. to to kind of like cover for them. Um, the other kind of advert, game advert, mobile game advert that you get have these absolutely ridiculous scenarios mm -hmm. to set up the game, and they're usually quite shocking. Um, and we had one example of that with Merge Mansion, mm -hmm. but oh. let's take an, another look. Jeff, this looks a little, th yeah. This looks a little more familiar, um, but maybe ooh, I'll wait till till after this and we can talk. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna watch a trailer for Mafia City. This I've seen. I think you must have seen this. I yes. haven't. I've seen a different variation of this. What? It's what? so weird. It's so weird. So I've seen, I've seen one where like they're in jail, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it just, it almost seems randomly generated. Like yes. it seems like the like there'll be it'll be like a cop in jail, and he goes up to like a prisoner, gives the prisoner like a pineapple, and the prisoner like turns into a fish. It's it's just what? like it's the most yep. it's obscure. It's just it's like weird. Completely nonsensical bullshit with like hyper photorealistic, you know, graphics. Mm. Yeah. So the thing that most of these mobile game adverts, especially the two varieties that we just looked at, is um, they are usually misleading and also manipulative in some way. Um, yeah. The interesting thing is there's actually a good 
if a bit insidious reason that these adverts are the way that they are. So we're going to break that down. Mm -hmm. um, oh, hell yeah. So let, welcome to the next section of this episode, which I like to call fake it till you make it. Okay. So uh, I don't think you need to be told, but many mobile games use incredibly fake adverts. Many and video games the, use fake many adverts. Many video <laughs> games do, yeah. <laughs> so, but mobile so games are particularly uh, egregious for it. A lot of the companies behind these are manipulating their adverts to give their game the best chance of being downloaded. And right. the content of the ad is often the result of iterating after A-B testing. Mm -hmm. okay. So for people that don't know, A-B testing is basically creating variants of something, putting it out there and then seeing which one the audience responds to and then kind of adopting that and iterating it and adjusting to improve the effectiveness of whatever it is, uh, in this case ads, and then doing that ad nauseum. Can, so I, companies can, I, can I interject with a fact? Go on. A -B give, us a, give us an A-B fact. A-B testing in terms of like video... Uh, thumbnails, etc. Pioneered mm -hmm. by porn. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, pioneered by a porn. lot of the, a lot of the kind of like uh, video stuff is is pioneered by porn. Like the the when you go to a video on YouTube and it will show you like a gif of it or like a yes, short clip that, of it. Mm -hmm. That Seems is like pioneered porn by that pornography. Yeah. yeah, like a lot of it is coming so from that. Um, yeah. SEO titling yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. I, obviously, I've never that. seen porn in my life, so sure. I, I no, honestly don't know. No. Um, but yeah. a lot of it is from porn. Yeah, and uh, thanks, porn. Netflix uses it a lot. Most websites use it. Like we've used it on Gamespot. Giant Bomb has used it um, to various degrees. Companies have basically learned the best way to entice people is to shock them and appeal to curiosity, <laughs> and generally do like wild shit to keep them engaged. Because when you keep people engaged on platform like uh, platforms like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, an ad is being served uh, anywhere that an ad is being served. Um, they those platforms are seeing benefit from that. It's like retention. The longer you hang around, they're getting something out of it. So right. for the app creators, the goal is simply just to convince people to download the game and install the free game. And then the hope, this isn't going to be surprising to you, is that among the people that download the game, there's some big spenders in there, what we probably know as whales. So the objective isn't just to sell people on it. It's just to get enough people to be like, huh, this is interesting. I'm going to download it and then hope that there's enough people. There's a few people in there that are going to spend money in it. Um, so simple stuff. But what does the content and the tone and the weirdness of the adverts really have to do with anything? The games that are being advertised are usually super shit and built <laughs> entirely around microtransactions. Yeah. But more importantly... They, they, they either have a super simple like match three genre style game, they're swappers where you're like moving pieces around, or they're a strategy, like a, a kind of like almost Civ or Age of Empire style, uh, Empire style mm -hmm. game. And it's the kind of shit that every mobile game is basically, unless you're like a standout mobile game that the stuff that we would be attracted to. Most 90% of the rest of it is pure garbage that fits into mm. one of those categories. Usually. It's saturated the market. Mm -hmm. So if, you wanna, if you're making one of those games and you need to distinguish yourself, you have to grab attention, which is where the idea of stories come in. Right. So creating fake ads that tell stories around bullshit match-free games is so common and prevalent that there's actually trends. What? around it <laughs> so uh, there's a website called Apptica, okay. which is basically oh. a company that ha that is an intelligence and app analytics service for uh, example like they they put together they put together this roundup of storylines that are the most successful at bullshitting viewers in ads what so this is, they put together, I don't know, I, I, this website is weird. It looks like they're giving an award to the best fake ads, which I am um, like, it seems like awful thing to do, but yeah, they're doing it. So they say the fake ad became very common this year, especially for match three puzzles to stand out from the crowd. Publishers invent engaging and catchy video and playable ads hoping to get more traffic. Here, here is a playable ad of Homescape's match three game. So this is oh okay game. so like a playable ad though so that's cool yeah so but then they have fake advertising and these are the storylines that are most successful 
So you have house repair storyline. Is that The Sims? Where, well, 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 kind of like, but... Oh, hello. Oh. Wait, has he got some problems in the bedroom? But he needs to fix his lamp? It seems like a fire has... What? Why would he do that? And then he's away. His ass burn must be incredible. <laughs> this is so weird. I... So, okay. This... So what so you're this seeing site, here... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing it's here like, is like, is is a story around a like you, we don't know what kind of game this is currently. Who knows? But 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 the story is what's important, and there's so right. it's so frequent that you have genres. So you have the house repair genre, right? As you see there, you have the save I, a character genre. Oh, I've seen that. this I've seen fucker! That. I've, seen, I've that. seen this guy. I haven't seen that one. I saw the one above it with like the pulling out like the the the, the layers. I've seen yes. him. I've seen him. You seen like, this? Yes, I've seen that. Yes, or yeah, variations yeah, yeah, yeah. of that. Yes. So there's the saving a character. There's also the choose your own story, which is what we watched with the mafia oh, one. Like right. Episodes. Episodes is one of those, right? It's so strange. This is so. So, so, so someone is someone is like I I if you told me the the choose your story shit with like the mm -hmm. the, the sort of like knockoff GTA stuff. Mm -hmm. If that was like somehow generated by like AI, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it kind yeah. of is. And then the other, uh, there's like um, a, a spot the hidden object uh, variety of them. Oh. So what? that's how prevalent bullshit, that's why it's important to have storylines because it is important mm -hmm. to hooking people and it's become so prevalent that there's actually trends around it. And, and, and where, and where are we also saying that like all of these, are all bait and switch where like when you download the game you are not playing anything that looks or resembles like all of these ads no really are wow. you More, uh, like especially a few years ago up until i mean like leading up to this point now mm -hmm. it's a little different where people are like actually making the games that the adverts are um selling but for the most part you're you're not playing the thing they just need you they know that they have a match three game that is indistinguishable from the billion other match three games. And they know that the only way to get people to download it and maybe pay is to create a storyline that doesn't show that it's a match three game. Yeah. So, it's, so, so it's basically like this wild it. misdirection and it's and it's also pretty much the same thing as fishing. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's also some science to behind the storyline thing. Ooh. So, okay. uh, there's a lad named Ishai Smart. I'm going to pronounce his name wrong. Ishai Smaja, uh, who used to work at King. So King right. is the Activision subsidiary that play that made Jeff's favorite mobile game, Candy Crush. Um, Everyone knows that. While he was working there, him and a team were working on a hidden object game. And long story short, they eventually ended up having to. That that game never came to fruition, but they eventually had to think about how to hybridize casual game genres, mm -hmm. um, which is what uh, King does. They, they do that stuff amazingly well. So the idea is, for example, how do we take a Switcher game and add RPG elements to it? Or how do we take a Match 3 game and get some resource management in there? They hybridize casual games with something a little more hardcore, and that by doing that, you get a simple concept that's got an addictive hook and that can be monetized. Well, when you, when you say it like that, it sounds evil. Yes. It is evil. Yes. I mean, it mm -hmm. basically is evil, but we know what we're getting into. So as part of this, he and his team, uh, they, they were working on and started mapping out affinity, something called affinity. Okay. And uh, they grabbed the audiences of a bunch of genres and stuck them onto one map and did some really smart science and data shit that I do not understand very well. And they did that to figure out where the overlaps are hmm. in all that. Right. So... They actually say on their website um, uh, oh. that uh, uh, they say they're using Affinity to simulate gravity between different game audiences. We've created a view of the US mobile gaming market based on audiences of the top 100 grossing mobile games and those linked to them. So right. what you're looking at here is the map of that. Oh my god. Oh it god. doesn't make any sense to normal people, but you can see certain things around here. Like here's Fortnite, there's Pokemon Go, there's Clash of 
Clash Royale or, or about one of those Titans, weird like mob that. Titan, yeah. Titan yeah. Candy yeah. Crushes over here. So I love they that, did that Solitaire found its way up on the board. Hell yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, so what is affinity? So affinity is the degree of likelihood that players of one game would play a different game or putting it in a different way. They say, uh, what can we infer about a person if we know they like game X? So right. they needed to do this because basically a lot of, like, as we said with the adverts, a lot of mobile game formats are what he designates as vanilla ice cream, basically. Mm. So if, if and the, the thought experiment that they put to in explaining it is like, if I asked you to imagine what kind of person likes vanilla ice cream, it could be literally anyone. It's really hard to tell yeah. what kind, you know, what the preference is. Sure. broadly speaking, are of someone that likes vanilla ice cream. You can't really get a good grasp of what they like and how you can hook them on something. Mm -hmm. But when you have more distinct tastes visible, you can start seeing overlaps and drawing lines to other things that they're likely to enjoy. For example, they learned that Fortnite players show affinity to genres and games characterized by competition. So sports, mm -hmm. Clash Royale, that kind of stuff. And they like fast gameplay and it comes from younger audiences mainly and they like lighter art styles and themes. Mm. So okay. what what does this mean for shitty mobile games with weird adverts? Basically, they learned that mobile games can be broken down into four key components um, that they can build around. That's core gameplay, a meta progression layer, theme and art style. Mm -hmm. But you can also build adverts around those same things. Mm even if it's not at all representative of the game. Right. So uh, that is like a key component into why the adverts are the way they are. So they highlighted a game called Gardenscape, which is a switcher type game. Okay. And notice that the audience originates mostly from audiences of genres who incorporate a light narrative and customization element. So this, okay. this random gardenscaping games, they realize, oh, people who play this game also like narrative and customization. And they're not usually connected to the Switcher genre mm. since it's a vanilla genre. Right. So basically, by appealing to people that like, like narratives and customization, they can bring them over to the Switcher genre, even if they traditionally aren't interested in that genre. The problem you have is, what if your game doesn't have that light narrative? Because it's a Switcher game. Yeah. Right. That That is when you need to start making shit up. And that is how <laughs> these adverts come into being. They, that, all of those trends that we saw, mm -hmm. none of those storylines exist within the game. But if you're trying to appeal to people that like storylines, they'll be like, huh, this is interesting. I like storylines. I'm going to download this game. And then you've got them playing a game that they would never have played otherwise. Oh. That's mm. So that's how these shitty adverts come in. So Homescape and a similar game from that same developer called Gardenscape were super popular. But guess what? Homescape and hey. Gardenscape's ads banned for as misleading. Wow. I thought I hadn't seen him around in a while. He's so, always yeah, in trouble. So, so they were like, yo, the game you're advertising looks and performs nothing like the shit you're advertising, so you can't do it. Basically. Yep. So they both they both came from a single developer and they're that type of game that this is the advert that spurred me into looking into this. It's these mm -hmm. pulling the pins to save the people. Um, and uh, they basically, here's what the game advert looks like and here's what the game looks like. Oh, I love oh, Candy Crush. Very, 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 very different is, things. Dude, so this is so funny because I will say this. There is something about some of like the physics and the sort of things that they show in mm -hmm. those ads where you're just like damn are they're doing that in like a mobile game like that seems kind of fun maybe yeah. like that seems pretty wild and that pin pulling thing was yeah. like the closest i've ever gotten to be clear i've never downloaded a game off mm -hmm. of a, an ad but those are the closest i've ever gotten to like considering doing it because it represent it something in those you know metrics and the descriptors that you're that you outlined like were triggering <laughs> my brain to be like oh that could be a thing that could be a thing you want to do like a real uh, thing yeah enjoy. i don't that's know wild. where's my water exists man if you want to play a mobile <laughs> that's game right that i that. played that i know that everyone game. did that was a good oh, game yeah. but like that's so surprising to me that they'd be willing, like, 
I get that the acquisition of putting an ad out and getting someone to download their app is huge. It'll bump them up in the mm-hmm. um, it'll bump them up in the charts. It'll bump up their sales. It'll bump up their user base. But like, how many people are gonna bounce out as soon as they, you know, don't get to rescue the guy with the little mustache? We'll get to that very soon. Oh. Yes. oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yummy, 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 yummy. So basically, these games, uh, Gardenscape, Homescape, they trick people into playing, downloading and playing via false advertising. Yeah. Um, so these fake ads are basically essential to the mobile world for user acquisition. And that's why you have these ridiculous looking adverts that are mm-hmm. wild and misleading. But the question you're probably thinking is why is this allowed to continue? Yeah. Yeah. Um, welcome to a section of the episode <laughs> that I call the FTC will let me be or let me be me so let me see, um, which is an M and N M and M line. Very good, uh, very I've, good. Uh, co-opted. Yeah. Okay. So uh, advertising is governed by the FTC, um, which is usually all over misleading ads that are damaging. Um, in fact, here's what they say they're all about on their website. When consumers see or hear an advertisement, whether it's on the internet, radio, television, or anywhere else, federal law says that ad must be truthful, not misleading, and where appropriate, backed by scientific evidence. Yeah, I mean, so what are they, they expecting yeah. with this shit? Yeah. So the problem with the FTC is they don't really care about mobile games ads um, that much because <laughs> let me tell you something: they, they don't are, care about a lot of ads. Yeah, they don't care on about national yeah. television. Yeah, yeah. In specifically for mobile game ads, they don't care, and there's just enough loopholes in the whole way they work that big companies, uh, big companies or most companies, can exploit and get away with what they're doing. The FTC looks especially closely at advertising claims that can affect consumers' health or their pocketbook. So that's the main uh, modus operandi of them. And uh, notice how it doesn't really say anything about games or other forms of entertainment. They they usually are specifically talking about alcohol and yeah. tobacco and right. any sort of things that's going to take your your bank account. Basically, is in direct uh, attack. So what is that? What pocketbook refers to? Like yeah, I imagine notebook. that's what. Yeah, your wallet. No, 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 yeah. Oh, your wallet. Your wallet. Yeah, that's how old the FTC book? is. They. No, yeah. that's how archaic the FTC is. Yeah, like my um, grandma had a pocketbook, right? Like that is yeah, what they exactly. are referring to, your pocketbook. <laughs> wow. Uh, all the money hidden underneath your uh, mattress. It, and it was is just what like referring coins, Ken Dog I guess. Defense. Yeah. 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 So you're probably thinking, wait, that does affect your pocketbook or slash mm. your bank account because it's microtransactions, so it should count, right? Definitely. Well, that's kind of like where it becomes a bit more insidious because- Here we go usually by the time you've reached the point in any of these games where you're spending money in a mobile game, Mm -hmm. you know what it is. You're not technically being tricked. They're not Uh, pulling a fast one on you. You've played enough of the game for them to go, well, when we asked you for money, you had a good idea of what this game is. Like a Steam refund. Basically, Yeah, we've seen you go this many hours on the clock. That's like that's like thinking you're joining a gym, but you're really doing heroin. Like, that, like <laughs> yeah, like that is what you know what I mean. Yeah, like, that, and that's that's where they don't really think about because we know there are certain types of personalities that once you get them at like the top of this like mm-hmm. uh, the gameplay loop design slide, like they they're not they're not stopping. They're going all the way because right. they have that kind of personality where they the psychological, you know, it's like slot machines. Once you've pulled the lever or what for some people it's right. simple as much as seeing the slots moving and they're like, That's oh it. shit. Yeah. Um so they don't pop, they don't factor stop. that in. Yeah. So some of these games, especially the ones that are like help this person escape, but are actually a strategy game or a match three game, mm-hmm. will have will actually have those sections in the game in the that are shown in the ad just to cover their asses but what they'll do is i downloaded a bunch of these and oh, i no. played it oh, i no. played oh, it hopefully, so, wow. yep. hopefully on a so burner I can, uh so i can attest that it was not on a burner so i have been getting <laughs> those ads non-stop <laughs> Goodbye, Tim. Um, so what they do is originally they got into a lot of shit for being so blatantly like not that at all mm. now what they do is They'll take those sections, especially the save the person by sliding the pin ones. 
um, specifically those, and they'll front load them. So they'll put them right at the start of the game. And you start playing it and you're like, this is the game that I thought. But then you're once you've done that, you're on the slide of the other game. And then what they do is they just pepper those moments randomly throughout the game. Like they're not the core of the gameplay. Oh. They're there just long. They're, they're, they're just frequently enough for you to feel like you haven't been scammed. Okay. Wait, that's a, like a psychological fucking like yeah, psych it, 101 is where you, yeah, you get is. people on and you reward them for doing the behavior that you want to show. Then you take the behavior away, but then you occasionally give them the thing yeah, that yeah. you want. And oh, shit, what's it called? I want to say yeah, but like the dog one, the the Pavlo, the Pavlovian. 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 Yeah, I mean, like that is that is kind. It is like slightly Pavlovian conditioning, but like it's not even about behavior. They just they're giving you the thing that you thought yeah. you wanted. But there's um, there's different like times you can leave in between to sort of reinforce the behavior, like completely reinforce the behavior by just giving the person rewards, yeah. or you can sort of exactly. like punish them by withholding or you know. Wait, so I mean, either way, it is, it is manipulating yeah, human 100%. psychology. I have a question. So when mm -hmm. you say they front load the other things to kind of like misdirect the fact that it is just a matching game. Yeah. What are they doing? Like, what are they front loading? They're front like these little weird cut scenes like or. or, or no, no, no. So the, in the games that I played, the pull the pin thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was that was the first like three things that I played. I had three instances of them. Okay. And Rescue then that it would man. go That's into. Good. Yeah, and so uh, rescue the man a few times, and then it would go into now it's a top-down strategy game. Got or, like, it. And okay. then, like, if you play what? for uh, enough, lo long enough, it will be like, here's the man again, and it's completely mm. random. You're like, why is this happening? It doesn't make any sense, sense whatsoever. So, like, basically, they have those up front, and they pepper them throughout, but the rest of the game is that same fruit machine design with loads of hooks that will keep you around and spending money. Um, and if you're a certain type of person, you basically get trapped. It's a really messed up loophole that they... Mm. Get, they're using to get around the kind of mis, you know, misleading element because yeah. technically now it's not misleading. The other thing that the uh, FTC says misleading is that it needs to impact a reasonable consumer. Okay. So, so not the, the gamers. <laughs> the definition, uh, not the gamers. The That's definition the of reasonable, reasonable consumer <laughs> is incredibly unclear. It yeah. doesn't. Mm. What it does doesn't that even define mean? it. Yeah. And because of that, there's enough workarounds that there's some real easy but real shitty defenses. For example, a reasonable consumer would have looked at the screen and the app listing and seen what the actual game is. So how that's a reasonable defense mm. against it, right? You could say that a reasonable mean. consumer looks at the thing that they're buying and investigates it. However, we know these apps, they exist in a way where it's like you see the advert, tap it or swipe up and it takes you to the thing yeah. and then you hit get and you move on with your life. Like, right. And also, not being funny, I, I'm staying with my mum at the minute and I've just watched the way that she interacts with technology. Um, like, no, you wouldn't do that. You would just, you know, see the no. big, sh the big shiny get of button course. and download it. No. But the FTC doesn't make that clear. It doesn't define what a reasonable consumer is. So the defense is there. You can get away with saying that. Mm. But we, as we all know, a reasonable consumer won't dig deep into what they're about to download because it's disposability and ease of acquisition on apps. Yeah. And that is ultimately... The other thing, the issue that they have is the world of technology and mobile games and adverts and the practices around it is moving so fast that an old, archaic organization like the FTC can't even begin to stay at pace no with chance. it. No chance. No so, chance. Right, so all it does is just turn a blind eye for now. Um, and, that is what, and that is why you have fake game ads and misleading game ads constantly everywhere and why they're allowed to get away with it and no one's stopping them. And it's never going to go away, it sounds like. Oh. Unlikely, no. But it's there like, it again, I mean, this is, you know, two weeks in a row. The law cannot keep up with the internet. <laughs> so how... I mean, I mean, that is the that is the theme of the internet. The cat yeah. is always out of the bag. And if you try and put it back in, it, it's imp it's this impossible task that you can never do. Wow, that's depressing. How do you uh, feel about that? I mean, you just said it was depressing, but uh, that was I mean, that was in totality the story behind shitty mobile game ads. But how do you feel now? 
I mean, personally, I want to know more. I I want to know more about that grandma. I'm just going to jail, but I feel like <laughs> I get it though. I understand what it what it really is all about. Yeah, uh, that's so- that's crazy. There's something very tragic about what you know. It's like a race to the bottom, right? It's just like yeah. this. It's like this. Who can be the most deceptive bait and switchy as possible. And that is, and again, like the wild thing about that is that it, it directly, it, it it's the worst things about the internet, but now just inside of mobile games, right? Like the worst mm. things about the internet are like the clickbait garbage that rests at the bottom of a site yeah. that you're just like, Oh, what is this trash here? Now they're, now they figured out a way to like completely take that and insert it into uh, what appeared to be, you know, mobile games or like quality mobile games. And it's, yeah, this is our dark future. So the grandma and the, uh, from the Merge Mansion advert is apparently mm-hmm. like one of a series of uh, <gasps> animations. So oh, there shit. is an oh, wait, 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 wait. entire, there's a man. The, <gasps> yep. There's a man. There's, there's like lore there's and man. everything. There's always a also, <laughs> this lady is like incredibly horny constantly in these oh. in these what? uh adverts whoa you see that it's just whoa. absolutely sh- what's going what on here there oh there's a third person. oh <laughs> okay there? there's like okay. stuff really popping off there's a lot and going there's, on there's in the like there. variants yeah. there's there's variants of that same advert we saw where instead of saying he's still alive on her hand it says you're next and uh oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry hang on hang on hang on go back up there is a fucking yeah. Game Theory episode about this. Yeah, there is. Like is this the new fucking views. Five Nights at Freddy's? Yeah, Lily's Garden. Um, Wait, that, so, I think her name is Lily. <laughs> the crazy thing about this is like, you watched that first Merge Mansion thing, and I was I was intrigued. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, there's mm-hmm. something there. But that's the wild thing is like, yeah. there it there could have there could like they did a lot of the work. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, some of it's there already. Yeah. I realize it's all a facade, but, but like... Yeah, they did that to appeal to someone like course, you who yeah. likes a narrative game. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then you would have downloaded the game, and now you're playing a game of match three that you wouldn't have otherwise played. So, so and that's why am, they like, make it like that. Matching all the rubies and the and the pocket watches and whatever mm-hmm. the yeah. fuck I'm matching. And the whole time I'm just like, where's the fucking grandma? <laughs> what's the deal? What she got yeah. written on her palm? <laughs> Who's alive? Yeah. Yeah. What's going yeah, exactly. on? Did I and- kill somebody? What year is it? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> You you got got by I, the uh, fake mobile wow. game. Yeah, well, now at least I won't have to download it though. But that's unbelievable, man. Oh, like that I said, is unbelievable. Super interesting and equally depressing. And there you have it. Another interesting but depressing episode of the very <laughs> online show. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what your favorite fake mobile game ads oh. is. Um, and I will say there are uh, entire subreddits dedicated to um, these fake mobile game ads and outing them. Uh, uh-huh. So that's a fun, yeah, there's, that's a fun evening. Yeah, shitty mobile game ads. Our special <laughs> mobile game oh, ads. Oh, hell yeah. So oh, I spent a lot of time on, on this uh, over the last week <laughs> while researching this Oh, that's game. not fair that the but whole yeah, background is Android. Are. Are, they trying, are they trying to say... <laughs> you trying to say Android games are a bastion uh, for this shit? I mean, it is true. The Android is the only place where you could probably get a virus along with it as well. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, for buying some some off-brand, like the Freedom Phone or whatever. Oh shit! Thank you for watching, everyone. In the meantime, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at Tomo H. Lucy is. I'm at Lucy James Games. And Jeff. I'm at Jeff Backlar. Thank you both. That was a lot of fun. You're very welcome, and we'll see you next time. He's alive. Thanks, Bourne.